there's a really cool article on GQ style out of the moment that focuses on Noah NY, the New York uh, men's, I don't know, you call it menswear? Yeah, menswear uh, clothing label uh, founded by Brendan Babson, who was the former direct clothing director or director of style. I forgot what his desk actual title was, but he was formerly known, formerly famous, famous for his work at Supreme, who's now been at the head of Noah NY, I think since 2015 or something along those kind of lines, right? Noah has been making some inroads in the scene for the most part. I think, you know, most of you guys are probably familiar with the hoodies, but um, a lot of their outerwear and cut and quote unquote cut and sew stuff is really amazing. Some of their footwear collaborations have been really spot on. Um, the the belts that they make are, you know, probably an underrated item in their, in their arsenal and of course the shorts. Um, but they, GQ started putting together a really cool sort of interview and understanding of bread and baby and trying to understand how a brand is operating in the post or in the, you know, in the current COVID world, especially um, with the backdrops of the uh, George Floyd protests happening now um, in America or mostly around the world. And I think the interview itself was really, really refreshing and really insightful. But one thing that really struck out for me, I'm going to mention it here, but let me just quickly show you the interview. So this is um, from GQ Style. It says, how a menswear brand stays afloat and stays ethical uh, through pandemic and protest. So it says the coronavirus presents an existential threat to the fashion industry while calls for racial justice uh, challenge brands to live up to their principles. GQ went inside Brendan Babson, independent, socially minded Noah, as the world turned upside down this spring. It's written by a guy called Sam Scoob or Scoob, Scoob, I really pronounce his name. But this bit really stuck out to me here at the bottom, right? And I'll read a bit more of it afterwards. Uh, duh. So it says here I called up Brendan Babson on April, up in April, sorry, amidst a swell of uncertainty curious about how a brand like his survives when the world caves in as we spoke um, over the course of the month Babjan's plan goose online marketing introduce some canny promotions and trust these customers would come through seem to be working sales were down across the board 30 to 40 percent by Babjan reckoning store closures meant that the brand's monthly in-person revenue of anywhere between 200 to 300 thousand in a month had evaporated but t-shirts hoodies were still flying out on the online shop and the full collection some portion of it at least would make it out of the factories into stores if stores opened i'm pretty confident we'll have a fair amount of product and general public might not notice any difference he said now the bit that stuck out for me was of course this bit I didn't know stores make this much in terms of like what they sell in store from just, you know, general foot traffic. I'm guessing that's what that means, right? Um, revenue, they make anywhere between 200,000 to 300,000 per month, which makes you, which makes me understand why a lot of these, because I've always thought, why some of these brands coming up? Like I remember reading something about Ian Connor's brand wanting, I think he tweeted actually, he wanted, he's, he's in the mind, he's in the hopes of opening up a retail store, uh, there's rumors about Midnight Studios doing the same thing. Um, a lot of these kind of, you wouldn't call them micro brands, but a lot of these brands are essentially pretty lean operation and for the most part independent Want and who absolutely kill it online, right? Midnight Studios being a good example and even Ian Connor Seco, they absolutely kill it online in terms of sales, direct to consumer, ship out the product from their base, no hassle, no uh, nonsense. You'd wonder why they'd want to get involved in trying to open a brick and mortar store right because you know having worked in a store having worked in streetwear stores having worked in fashion stores having been around that environment i know it's no easy game um to get involved and to what to open your own brick and mortar store is not something that you do off the cuff but it's a long story tradition isn't it? in menswear or in general in fashion right the idea of wanting to own your own spot so that you can inv essentially invite your customer or potential customers into your world. You can kind of craft and merchandise and, you know, really adorn the store with all the things that influence the brand that are probably that you can't really translate on a 2D image or you can't really translate on a piece of fabric. A store will go a long way to doing that from the incense that you use to the music that plays in the background to the staff that you hire to the fixtures that you use, the publications that you um, sell in your store. All of these things are going to be little tiny 
indications, little tiny style codes that you leave all dotted around the brand that really let people understand what you're really about. And if I think about, you know, where that kind of origin comes from, probably, you know, from the skateboarding world, going into like skater on stores where, you know, the guy that works there is essentially there eight days a week, you know, 365 days in a year. Um, he's, you know, if he's got a dog, you're really familiar with it. If he's got friends that work with him that also skate for the team, you're familiar with it. They don't never hire anyone external it's always people within the family all that sort of vibe kind of adds to the law of the store that you shop at and sometimes it even elevates really shitty product up to a level that you kind of think wow i kind of i gotta have this t-shirt even though it's made from on a, on a terrible blank it's printed you know it's printed with zero to little quality assurance you still want it because you, you associate with that store you associate with the brand owner you associate with that scene so i guess the same thing is at foot when you walk into a noah store and i've walked into their store in new york and it's fucking gorgeous right um one of the probably best merchandise and presented stores I've been in in a while very refreshing place to go into you don't get none of that kind of like bro iced out sort of like um yeah you don't get broed out right you don't oh, all they, they call it you don't get vibed out in the Noah store everyone's really friendly and courteous and just generally nice enough for a chat and I guess that's one of the main things what you really want when you go to a menswear clothing store right you're already a bit of a geek anyway because you spend all your wages on you know on a pair of corduroy pants the least that you want is a bit of chat right to make that pant purchase worth it because you know for sure no one's going to agree with you so i thought that was a really eye-opening that a store would still make that much but the entire interview is really enlightening i really recommend you check it out um brendan's a really cool guy um loads of bits in there about him questioning his position he's played the part he's played in systemic racism in the US, which I think is a little bit harsh on himself. I think he's doing a good job with the platform he has. Um, he's trying to educate his customers, trying to relay that message back to them and so that they can affect change in their own little way. And just being an all round really good dude, man. I really recommend you check it out. Again, one of the better one of the better dudes in the street where menswear scene at the moment, somebody that doesn't ask too much for their customers but always gives a lot for the community. Somebody that does kind of install all the values that it means to be involved in streetwear apart from the selling of the limited edition clothes and then getting upset when people ransack your store. Brendan is the real deal. I definitely recommend you check him out, man, and really support the stuff that he's doing there and just generally kind of, you know, send him love and support during these tough times, I'm sure, um, that they're, what, you know, they're having to hang in there, especially in New York, you know. Um, there's loads of conflicting reports there about what um, Como is doing and if he's doing things right or wrong and de Blasio is obviously not getting a bit of a good rep so I can only imagine the kind of turmoil that's causing for business owners so definitely um, reach out to him if you can and give me love or better yet read the article share it with your friends and yeah spread the, the Noah love that way it's on GQ style now it's titled how men's own brands stay afloat and stay ethical through a pandemic and protest. Again, I'll link in the show notes for you guys to check out. I'll put in the podcast description, I always put notes and little links to the articles I mentioned. So definitely make sure you check that out. And if you're listening, watching via sorry, YouTube channel, check down below. You have the link there below. You can watch the, you can sorry, read the article yourself in full.